everyone, this is Janessa. Um, thank you so much for taking a look at this PowerPoint. I just wanted to give you guys a little bit uh, more information about evidence-based practice. We're briefly going to talk about research methodologies, types of evidence, and evidence validity. So what are research methodologies? Um, two terms are qualitative and quantitative. So we'll talk a little bit about what those are. So qualitative versus quantitative. Qualitative research is uh, the use of language as a descriptor. It's very subjective. And you'll often see the design um, as a survey for research. Quantitative is objective, and its descriptors are measured numerically. Quan sounds like quantity, which refers to numbers. Quantitative research is a hard science. It uh, usually tests theory, and it's probably what you are most familiar with depending on what area of nursing you work in. Qualitative is a hard, excuse me, a soft science, and it's subjective, and it usually develops theory. You may see qualitative research design, um, like I said, in a way of surveying patients or participants, and that would be, you know, things like you, you might think, you know, how to measure self-care, how to measure hope in cancer patients or their families or how to measure support, you know, those types of things. Um, whereas quantitative, you'd be measuring, um, you know, maybe the number of surgical site infection with a specific dressing. So out of 100 patients, X percent had a surgical site infection when a silver dressing was used versus out of another 100 patients, X percent of patients had a surgical site infection when a silicone dressing was used. You know, that's definitely much more objective. Okay, so... Now let's talk about types of evidence now that you have an understanding of qualitative versus quantitative, um, those differences. I think you'll better understand this pyramid and how it's valued. At the top, you'll see systematic reviews and meta-analysis, and basically those are just studies of a group of studies, of multiple studies. So with the systematic review, uh, there are many studies that are selected using strict inclusion criteria. Experts then analyze these studies and come to a conclusion. This can be a qualitative, quantitative, or a mix of both methodologies. Whereas the meta-analysis is a little bit different, it basically looks at multiple uh, randomized controlled trials and it's a quantitative study that summarizes results um, from a group of studies. This is usually what changes practice, the, this evidence here. Randomized controlled trials are highly valued. Um, they're very strong, and they are considered the gold standard of research. The reason being uh, is that they're randomized, which means there is a decreased chance for bias. So um, a cohort study is an analysis of a group either prospectively or retrospectively to evaluate for risk factors. Um, prospective studies are longitudinal and can last for, you know, decades really. And then you just continue to go down in the hierarchy. Uh, we'll talk about some of these others later. But I'll take a look here at levels of evidence. Levels of evidence, uh, we have one, one through seven. Now, not all these were on the previous slide. You'll notice that five wasn't there and six or seven weren't there. So one thing that's really important to note is that as you're sifting through literature and research, you'll you'll often come across terminology that's really unfamiliar, but if you have an idea of a description of a level of evidence, then you can place that article in the appropriate um, level of the pyramid. So we will come back to this because I'm gonna show you an example of that in just a minute. 
I went ahead and did my own research um, and I used a topic of compassion fatigue in nursing and self-care in nursing to just find some articles for you guys so that we could take a look at them together and determine just what the scan is a qualitative or quantitative and what level of evidence is it. So take a look here and you'll see that this is a, I pulled this text from a randomized clinical trial. So that's level two on the pyramid. And if you look at the patients and methods and then the results, results are key here. You're gonna see all these numbers. So what does that tell us? This was a quantitative methodology. Um, you can easily scan your article to find to determine validity within like 30 to 60 seconds and that can really really help you in sifting through hundreds of articles that can seem to be you know really overwhelming all of this literature just pops up and you don't even know where to begin and um, one nice thing is to just look at the title Click on it, read the abstract, and then scroll down to methods and design and results, and um, you'll get a really good picture of what that article has to offer. So let's take a look at another one. So here's two more. We'll take a look at, again, qualitative or quantitative, what level of evidence um, do these fall into? This first one, um, it says a cross-sectional design and survey methodology. That is perfect. I love that within the very first sentence you have a really good idea as to what this article is all about. It's a cross-sectional design on the pyramid that's level five, and then what does survey methodology mean? Well, that just means that it's a qualitative, right? Um, they're using a survey. Uh, we shouldn't be surprised at that because they're examining compassion fatigue and satisfaction levels. I mean, how do you do that, right? You do a survey. Uh, the second research article here is a concept analysis. Now, this is what I was talking about when I had said before that it's likely that you will see unfamiliar terms and, um, it can be really frustrating because you don't know what that means. What is a concept analysis? And where does that fall in my my hierarchy? Is this, you know, credible or valid? So if you if you try to have a really, you know, just like a foundation understanding of levels of evidence, then you can easily just kind of read through this article, skim it through, see what they're doing, what method they're using, and what the purpose is, and you can you you'll really quickly be able to identify the level of evidence and put it into that pyramid. You can't see this whole article, but again, this study is it's trying to reveal a deeper knowledge of compassion fatigue is what it says, and based on that fact that it's you know analyzing the phenomenon of compassion fatigue in theory, it falls into uh, level six research. Now, how do you assess validity? Well, what we've already discussed is that it's really important for your sanity when you have hundreds of articles pop up through your filtered search that you can click on articles and scan them. Within 30 to 60 seconds, you'll know if you want to keep it or if you want to move on. And the way you do that is you just take a you know brief look at the abstract. Does this even apply to you? And um, what you're researching. And then look for terms like random, conceal, or blind. That increases the strength of the article. Um, you want to identify if there's a statistically significant difference, which it will say under results. It'll say whether or not it's statistically significant. It just you know, it's in black and white for you. And then one thing that's really important that you should know um, is that it's really 
a nice thing to utilize the literature article as a whole. Now they've done a ton of research to create this article for us to read. If you find something that is highly valued, then you want to scroll down and you want to check their references. Where did they get all this fabulous information? And I can really expand on your search um, in, you know, creating a lot less stress for you in the long run. So use their references and, you know, continue. What questions do you guys have about all this? Uh, please contact me via email or discussion board.